It's a Thursday, March 17th, and the time for your Bobby Destiny Morning News update. The Ministry of Education is in talks with the Caribbean Examination Council on a range of fresh concerns from teachers, including the timeline for this year's sitting that is set to begin in May. It comes amid calls by the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union for the postponement of this year's CXC exams to allow students time to adequately prepare themselves after nearly an entire year online. BSTU President Mary Redmond said the union had also expressed numerous other concerns during talks with council officials. The BSTU would have in our meetings at CXC to consider having exams later down in the year, not starting in May. We know that later exams would mean later results, and that is a consequence of the later exam time. But certainly, it allows children to have the better preparation in the subject, not more and grounding in the subject, not only for exams, but to have better facility with the content of different subject areas. Minister of State in the Ministry of Health and Wellness with responsibility for the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Dr. Sonia Brown, is pleased that banks and other commercial entities will have to contribute to government's $1 billion bill to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Applauding Prime Minister Mia Morty's announcement of the pandemic contribution levy, Dr. Brown said that the entire population must contribute to the COVID fight. The government has spent, and you heard it from the Prime Minister, millions of dollars with respect to keeping this country alive and afloat and the working force working since the pandemic has begun. And I only think it is right that the institutions mentioned, the banks, um, and I have no regrets here whatsoever because the public of Barbados has been living in a Barbados where you're putting money into the banks, they use our money in our savings, and you get back, some months I see a whole cent in interest rates. I wonder if I chose to cash in that cent, what they would give me since cents don't exist anymore. The fees for the banks are astronomical. One of my accounts, $5 every month comes off. What, what happens to somebody that has a salary? We have a lot of ash workers and so on, of even much less than they get to take five dollars off on an account. And then you reach the ATMs where you cannot draw, withdraw less than, I think $50 is the last one I saw. People don't have this kind of money. So it's about time these institutions contribute to what we have spent, not only for their employees, but for them as well, we have spent. The Senate convened on Wednesday for the first time since Parliament resumed back in February, albeit briefly. The session came on the heels of Monday's High Court ruling that the Senate was properly constituted with just 18 of the 21 members appointed so far. Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator Lisa Cummins, who is also leader of government business in the Senate, laid several bills at the session before it was adjourned. I'd like to welcome all of the honorable members back into the place, older existing members and new members, uh, those in a new incarnation. Uh, welcome back to, as the president termed it, our, our historical home here in Parliament Buildings in Trafalgar Square. It is good to be home, in the words of the Prime Minister, in the other place. Uh, I would wish to lay, Mr. President, the following bills and to move the first reading of the following bills in the Senate. The Constitution Amendment Bill 2022, the Final Appropriation Bill 2018 to 2019, the Final Appropriation Bill 2019 2020, the Final Appropriation Bill 2020 2021, as well as the first reading for the Road Traffic Amendment Bill 2022. Mr. President, I beg to move the suspension of this honorable sitting and to re and to and to reconvene on Friday morning at 10 a.m. in this place, where we will begin to debate the Constitution Amendment Bill, the Appropriations Bill, and we will continue the deliberations on the Appropriations Bill on Monday and Tuesday of next week, also at 10 a.m. 
The current rise in COVID-19 cases in other regions across the world should serve as a cautionary tale for those in the Americas, including the Caribbean. That warning from the Assistant Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Chabas Barbosa. He was speaking during PAHO's weekly update on the pandemic. COVID-19 infections and deaths are declining in most of our region, but there are still too many cases and deaths being reported every day. A clear indication that the transmission is not yet under control. Since the virus arrived in the Americas two years ago, 149 million cases of COVID-19 have been reported and 2.6 million people have died. Cases are rising again in other parts of the world, serving as a cautionary tale for our region. Cases increased by 28.9% in the Western Pacific region, by 12.3% in the Africa region, and by almost 2% in the European region. This virus puts us all at risk, especially the unvaccinated. That's why we must continue our efforts to close the equity gap and protect the most vulnerable with COVID-19 vaccines. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To news from other region, Jamaica's education minister says technology will remain a permanent and important part of the country's education system despite the return of face-to-face -face classes. More in this report from Television Jamaica. It's been one week since full face-to-face -face classes resumed. Education Minister Favor Williams indicated that challenges may delay some schools fully returning students to the physical classroom, but insists that this is the way forward. So, what of online classes? Regardless of the fact that our children are back into the face-to-face -face environment, technology will remain a permanent and important part of the education system. Minister Williams was speaking at a tablet handing over ceremony at the Tivoli Gardens High School in Kingston on Monday, where the Barita Foundation donated 310 tablets and 15 laptops valued at $10 million to students and teachers of 10 schools across the island. She says the Own Your Own Device initiative will continue as the Education Ministry plans to continue the online education platforms along with face-to-face -face classes. The Google Meet platform will continue to be available uh, for after-school classes, for homework support. We will continue to do that and therefore we are going to continue to ensure that all our students have a day. And finally, on the international front, the COVID-19 pandemic is not over. That warning from Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Teros Cabriesos, who said reported cases of COVID-19 are once again increasing globally after several weeks of declines. Speaking at a press conference in Geneva, the World Health Organization chief said the increase was occurring despite reductions in testing in some countries which meant that cases that are being reported are just the tip of the iceberg. First is we still have Omicron, um, which is transmitting at a very intense level around the world. We have sublineages of Omicron BA.1 and BA.2. Um, BA.2 is more transmissible than BA.1 even. Um, and this is the most transmissible variant we have seen of the SARS-CoV-2 virus to date. Um, in the context of lifting of public health and social measures, lifting of the use of masks, lifting of 
um, physical distancing, um, lifting of restrictions, of, of limiting people's movement. This will provide the virus an opportunity to spread. Um, we have also uh, incomplete vaccination coverage in many parts of the world, and in particular among people who are at risk of developing severe disease. And we have huge amounts of misinformation that's out there. The misinformation that Omicron is mild, misinformation that the pandemic is over, misinformation that this is the last variant that we will have to deal with. This is really causing a lot of confusion that's out there. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.